One of the greatest characteristics of God himself is his holiness. You know, I'm tempted sometimes to say that love is the greatest characteristic, but I believe that his holiness encompasses all of his characteristics. And one day, we're going to be able to see very clearly what a holy God he is in all of his glory. Thank you, choir, for reminding us again today of who God is, what he's about. I want you to turn in your Bible this morning to Romans chapter 12, and we'll get there in just a moment, and just want to say a word, and I I believe I can speak on behalf of Brother Hunter as well, that we are greatly appreciative to you and for the gift that you shared with us this morning. Thank you uh, for allowing us to serve here in this church, and God bless you all for that. I also want to remark on what Linda shared a few moments ago. This committee does a tremendous, powerful work in our community. Not as much as they would like. I doubt there's a week that goes by that someone doesn't call or come by here that needs some help. Folks, we live in a sad world and it's getting worse And we hear the numbers every time, really, we turn on the TV that 23 million Americans are out of work or underemployed, and that number seems to be growing, and we see the effects of it. It trickles down all over the place, and there are people that are hurting. There are people that are in need. And you know, the hardest thing in the world is to turn anyone away. Sometimes that has to be done. That's not what we want to do, but, you know, and this committee does the, the, a great work. They get together, and they decide. Sometimes they have to make a decision, who are we going to help and how much we're going to help with. And, you know, that's hard. It breaks their hearts. It ought to break all of our hearts, the condition that people find themselves in today. So uh, when you see the, these committee members, Understand what they're trying to do and commend them for it, but also as a church, uh, and we're going to talk about some more in a moment, what we're to be about as we, as Brother Hunter said a moment ago, we work together. It's not a, it's never a one-person show in any church. It's got to be the church that works together for all of these endeavors. I'm very appreciative that the church has begun in, in taking steps to be more involved in the community and in missions and, and the ministries that God has given us. Turn in your Bibles this morning to Romans chapter 12, and I want you to go down to verse 3, and I want to begin there and read just three verses this morning. Beginning in verse 3, For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly or clearly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we be in many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Now, I want to read verse 5 again because that's where we're going to concentrate on today. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Let us pray together. Father in God, how grateful we are for the opportunity that you've given to us today to come into your house, to come and be blessed by you, to come and partner and benefit from the beautiful music and the praises of our Savior. You've given us that privilege as your church to come together and to lift our voices. You've given us the privilege of coming together and giving our offerings, expressing to you our gratitude for all that you've given to us. You've given us the opportunity of coming together and opening your word where we may receive from it the strength that will help us become who we ought to be in Christ. God, we give you thanks and praise. 
And again, as it resonates in our minds and in our hearts, how holy you are. Sometimes I don't think that we really can grasp that. Our unholiness is seen as we come to realize how holy you are. And God, still you're a God of grace and a God of love who reaches down into our unholiness to bring us up to you that we might be made right with you through Jesus Christ. Lord, there may be those here today who have never had that experience. Maybe they've never really understood what they need to do with their life. Understanding that Jesus gave his for us, that we must give ourselves to you. And I pray, Father, that you, with your searching Holy Spirit, reach into our minds, look into our hearts, bring great conviction here today so that we can be drawn to you. And then, Father, let this verse that we have emphasized this morning, your word, reach into our heart and show us what we are to be about as church. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If we understand what being a Christian is all about, if we understand what being church is all about, then we should have a great desire to fulfill our partnership with God in what He wants to do. And friends, that's what church is. That really is the bottom line. It is not what this church or any other church wants to do. It is what God wants to do. And if we understand Christianity, if we understand what church is, our great desire would be, Lord, we agree with you, we're on board with you, and we're ready to fulfill that partnership with you in what you are doing in this world. Now, last time I talked to you about, first of all, the basis of our involvement. You see, the basis of involvement or of involving ourselves in God's work is God's mercies. That God actually gave us what we do not deserve. His grace is his undeserved gift, but what God does in mercy is that he actually gives to us what we do not deserve. We deserve judgment. But through Jesus Christ, God said, this is what I want to do for you. And so the basis of our involvement in what God is doing is the mercies of God. And now this morning I want to move forward as we look at the beauty of our involvement. And again, I want to read verse 5, and I want you to latch on to the beauty of what church really is about So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. There is a great song we often hear when we have the Lord's Supper, but I believe the song is, is much more expansive than that. It's much deeper than just about the Lord's Supper. And the name of the song is How Beautiful. Let me share the words with you. How beautiful the hands that serve the wine and the bread. And the sons of the earth, how beautiful the feet that walk the long dusty roads and the hill to the cross. How beautiful the heart that bled, that took all my sin and bore it instead. How beautiful the tender eyes that chose to forgive and never despise. And as he laid down his life, we offer this sacrifice that we will live just as he died willing to pay the price. How beautiful the radiant bride who waits for a groom with his light in her eyes. How beautiful when humble hearts give the fruit of pure lives so that others may live. How beautiful the feet that bring the sound of good news and the love of the king. How beautiful the hands that serve the wine and the bread and the sons of the earth. How beautiful it is to be involved in the body of Christ, to be a part of the body of Christ. My friends, in being involved in the church is a beautiful thing. 
But how do we go about getting involved in church? Now let's go back and examine the question a little bit more. Are we just talking about coming together? Now I stress the importance of coming together when we were in Hebrews 10. It is extremely important for his church to gather together for the teaching and the preaching and the instruction from God's Word. It is important for us to come together to fellowship with one another. It is important for us to come together and to encourage one another. But I want to share with you that the greater call in the church is to be and do church. The Great Commission says we are to go out. Acts 1.8 says we are to go out. The book of Acts is the history of the early church filled with God's Spirit, moving in obedience to God, expanding its reach from its beginning in Jerusalem to the whole world. You see, friends, the church was never meant just to sit still and do nothing. There's a lot of movement in the world today that that's what church is, that we are simply to come and reach up to God. I read that in the past week. Wherever this, and, and it was talking about a book, and I was trying to read, and, and, because I didn't know whether I wanted to order the book, but I really don't. Simply reading the, the introduction of what the book was about, and it simply asked, wherever does this idea come from of being a reaching out church? Church is about coming and reaching up. Well, friends, part of church is about reaching up. But part of church is being the body of Christ. To be the body of Christ. And so again, as we deal with the question, how involved, how to be involved in church? I want to give you a simple answer. And the simple answer would be finding a place and plugging in. Better yet, finding our place and plugging in. Now let me explain it this morning in three ways. First of all, finding our place in union with Christ. We being many are one body in Christ. The most important question becomes, are you in Christ? The word church has come to designate many different things in our world and many different groups. But when you study the New Testament and you read the New Testament, the church, the meaning, is those who are brought together in Christ. The church is the followers of Jesus Christ. Other groups may claim that they're church, and other groups may claim that they're going to God and they're doing good and and they have a pathway. But friends, the New Testament says the church is the followers of Jesus Christ. There is a relationship with each other simply because there is a relationship with Jesus Christ. In Christ is a favorite expression of the Apostle Paul. And that phrase has a flip side, which is also found throughout the New Testament. Colossians 1.27 says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The world around us offers some kind of a different message. The world may say there is hope that we can have by following different paths. There is hope that we can find by being good. But God's message is there is hope only in Christ. Christ in you. You see, where we often miss the mark and miss the truth is that we come and we join ourselves together and join ourselves to a church, and we may attend, and we may give, and we may come to the activities of of church. But what we must have right, what we must have right is Christ in you. 
And if we don't have that right, no matter if we gather together, no matter what group it might be, if we're not right about that, we're not going to be church. And you see, if that is taken care of, then you in Christ is what this involvement is all about. The beauty of involvement in church is understanding this union with Christ. We are His body. And He left His body here to function and to work just like His own body functioned and worked physically in this world. Being in Christ means that we're so united with Him that we carry out His work. Whatever Christ is about and does is what His body is about and does. Secondly, finding our place in unity with Christians. Listen to it again. We being many are one body in Christ, members of one another. When we are in Christ, understanding that we are His body, we belong to each other. We are a part of the whole body. The body functions together. It is a unit. All the different parts are needed to function properly those seen and those not seen. Now, I've shared this before with you, and I want to share it again because when I was coming through school, it made such an impression upon my mind and in my life. And I'm talking about those science books that I've referred to before, and I don't know if they have those anymore, but I remember them. And you could flip through the pages, and it would have an outline of the body. And as you turn the overlay, you have the skeletal system, and you have the the, the circulatory system and the respiratory system and, and all of those different systems. But when you turn those overlays over, it suddenly becomes a body. And you see, that's what the body's all about. It takes all of those things to really be a body. And that's what Christ's body is about. You see, the body is a complete package. And that's how Christ's body is to work. Each part belongs to the whole, and each part depends on each of the other parts to function and to do its work. I was in my shop one day, and I dropped a tool. It's not uncommon for me. You drop things. In the process of dropping that tool, somehow it got in the air. Now, Folks, I'm painting a picture of you of some kind of spastic. <laughs> you know, I'm really, you know, when you drop something, the normal path is to go down. Somehow this tool got all in the air, got behind my head, all around everywhere, and I twisted and I turned and finally caught that tool with my other hand before it hit the floor. Now, I'm not saying to you that that's any magnificent task on my part. Let me tell you what really happened. When I dropped that tool, my brain sent a message to my entire body to react, to twist and to turn and to catch that tool before it hit the floor. And it happened in a split second. My whole body was involved in that action. And friends, the body of Christ operates the same way. The whole body works with every other part at the impulse of Christ to accomplish the work of Christ. That is the beauty of our involvement with each other. We are the body. And the body can't function without all of its parts. Thirdly, finding our place in the uniqueness as the church. We being many, individually, are members of one another. Every part 
of our body is different than the other parts. But each part is unique in its function. But the body is tied together in such a way that every part is involved in everything the body does. Every part is involved in everything the body does. And each part is unique to what the body is supposed to do. No part is more important than the other, but all parts are to function as part of the body. I want to share with you a poem that someone gave to me some time ago, and it's entitled, Body Parts. Listen to this. Every day at lunch, I go for a run. I like to exercise, get away from my desk, and it's fun. One day last week, I went to my locker to dress. I heard a commotion, and I was ready to exit this mess. Then I realized that the commotion was all mine. My eye started it by complaining that he was too confined. I want to be afoot, he said. It's boring up here. I'm not swapping, said the foot. Besides, I want to be an ear. Well, that started it. Next, my pinky spoke up. I want to be important. My biggest task is holding a coffee cup. Then my bum knee said he was good at bending in such action, but he could show my nose a thing or two about olfaction. Things were getting out of hand, if you'll pardon the pun, and I was getting no closer to going for my run. Let's try it, I said, if you guys really want to swap, but we've got to get going so this fussing's got to stop. So my eye, without blinking, got into my shoe. It stinks in here, and it's dark. He said, this is true. I want to go back. How do you stand it? Of the foot, he asked. It's not so bad up, up there after all. I'll do my task. I guess you're right, said the foot. I can't be an ear. I'm just not attractive on the side of your head, he said without cheer. The pinky was more determined. First he tried being a thumb. Then he tried to be an elbow, but looked really dumb. Finally, he sighed. I'm best at what I do. I'll be a good pinky and balance that cup for you. My knee was watching and listening without saying a word. And then he said, all this fussing and swapping is just a bit absurd. I'm staying right here to help carry your weight. Besides, your other knee would look funny with a nose for a mate. I would point a finger at the eye for starting this, he said, but I don't have one. So I'll bend and flex peacefully instead. The moral of this rhyme is easy to see. All my parts are equally important to me. In the same way, we all have abilities and a talent or two. So find your place. Be content with what God calls you to do. Body parts. Someone said, God does not make duplicates only originals. Our uniqueness is a gift from God. But that uniqueness was given to work with the rest of the body of Christ, His church. And the beauty is when each one does what God has given us to do as part of the whole body, we work just like his physical body did when he walked among us. How beautiful the body of Christ. When it's working, when it's involved, doing the very thing that God called each of us to do. Now that's the only way we can be involved. You see... I want to ask you something to close today. What are you doing with your uniqueness? Are you painting a beautiful picture of the body that moves and functions? Or is it a picture of parts that are sitting around and the other parts trying to move? 
Next time, I'm going to come back with the rest of the chapter. You see, what I said in a simple answer, how to be involved in the body of Christ is finding our place and plugging in. And every one of us have a place. And so we need to find that place. We need to find that function. And I want to come back next week and talk more about the benefits of our involvement what we're supposed to be and do as church as we look at the rest of this chapter next week. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the day, for your love, for what you've called us to be and to do, your church. Thank you, Father, that many are latching on, learning their place in your body, Going forward and doing instead of talking. Getting involved. Reaching out beyond ourselves. God, I know that makes you pleased. I pray that you would give us more power to do it. Greater imagination and greater strength to be your church. Let loose in this world. Father, it begins by being in Christ, having Christ in us. It begins at the cross. So, Lord, if there are those today who need to come and get in Christ by asking Jesus to be the Savior, their personal Savior, I pray for that. Lord, maybe there are others that need to just come to the altar or to be part of this church, part of what God is trying to do, I pray for that. Lord, we lift praise to you, and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand as we sing?